We're getting reports that Republican Congressman Trent Franks from Arizona is about to resign, possibly over inappropriate behavior. We'll bring you any developments when they come. Mm. Anyway, President Obama still has Trump on his mind. Tuesday, he spoke to the Economic Club of Chicago, where Crane's columnist Greg Huns noted a startling comparison of Trump to Hitler. <laughs> Huns paraphrases what he heard President Obama say. We have to tend to this garden of democracy or else things could fall apart quickly. That's what happened in Germany in the 1930s, which despite the democracy of the Weimar Republic and centuries of high-level cultural and scientific achievements, Adolf Hitler rose to dominate. 60 million people died. So you got to pay attention and vote. So, Nazi Germany, here we come. Now, he said this just hours before Trump recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital, which makes Donald Trump a pretty weak Nazi. The worst one. Yeah, the worst one ever. <laughs> and after America had just decimated ISIS, the worst group of fascists since the Nazis. So we aren't becoming Nazis. We're stopping Nazis. But this is what liberals do, comparing adversaries to Hitler. But Obama's right. If you stop paying attention, anything could happen. You could elect an inexperienced senator from Illinois who relentlessly expands executive power with a phone and a pen, a radical progressive, just a stone's throw from Stalinism, which killed over 100 million people. See how easy this stupid little game is? So as Obama indulges lazy tropes, he ignores the crushing of ISIS, a free press that's now louder than ever, and a federal government whose reach and size may be shrinking for once. Because, of course, that's what dictators do. They shrink government. Oof. If that's Nazi Germany, someone slept through history class. <laughs> Can we call a moratorium on Hitler comparisons, uh, Juan? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. There. Done. <laughs> Excellent. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Two, three. Up next, one more, a 12-minute one more thing. <laughs> Just toss well, the special say, report. I will say, I, I thought what he said about paying attention and voting, boy, that's good. That's important for Democrats, especially going into midterms. So, well, that's I mean, important for everybody, but you don't need message. Hitler. Well, the thing about it is he didn't mention Trump's name, but he gave every indication, yeah. like all these guys do, that he's talking <laughs> about, about Trump. Trump. Yes. And when you look at what Trump's doing, you talk about, oh, smaller Don't government. do it. Oh, oh, my no, gosh. No. Wait, yeah, right. smaller government. Yeah, yeah, but when, you, but, but when you look at what Trump's doing in terms of regulation and things like this week, mm -hmm. taking away federal parkland and so forth, a lot of people get upset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's why it would have been better if, well, it's better for any president to try to pass something through Congress because that's how our system works, that you can then have it more enshrined in law rather than having a pen and a phone. Then the next president has also has a pen and a phone, and those things get rolled back. I don't, I don't think too many people roll back federal parkland. Yeah. Just oh, giving it back to the yeah. people. Yeah. One. It yeah. was a land grab. By the way, there are a lot of bears in those acres. parks. Those places aren't safe. Uh, you know, uh, That's why you stay out of parks. I stay out of the parks. That's one actually, reason. actually, I've been told I'm not allowed in the parks. It's a restraining order. Yes. All right. So, uh, Jesse, yeah. the thing that kills me about this conversation is that it ignores the central truth that the press has never been more alive because of Trump. They were comatose under Obama because that was their guy. That was their benign emperor. So now they're shouting and shouting. Isn't that a good thing? Shouldn't they rejoice? Yeah, I mean, they're all getting rich, and that's fine. That's democracy and capitalism. But this is a case study in media bias. Imagine if Bush, oh, yeah. on the first year, came out overseas and called Obama Hitler. I mean, that would be a huge story. And now the press is covering up for this. You're not going to hear it anywhere, probably, except here on The Five. Also, I thought Obama was better than this. Mm -hmm. To compare his predecessor to Adolf Hitler. No, no, I mean, his successor. The successor to Adolf yeah, not, Hitler? Not horrible, horrible. Just demeaning beneath him. I thought he was better than this. I guess it was wrong. I'm not often wrong, but I guess I am. Oh, my God. He's as bitter <laughs> as the so bitter nuts. clingers he smeared earlier on in 2008. And there's a reason he's so bitter, Juan. Why? It's because his legacy is being dismembered limb from limb. They're about to revoke the mandate. The Iran deals in the crosshairs. The year he leaves office, the economy starts surging. Paris and... ISIS is being decimated. So I understand why he's angry, but that was just a horrific comparison. Well, oh, yeah. KG. Well, I, well, you should look at his numbers versus Trump's numbers some days. If you, you, just, you just think. Popularity means five. nothing when oh, you're in office. See. Very one. good. That's right. Okay. KG. Uh, that's that's I, a good thing for a Trump backer to say. Mm -hmm. uh, talk to me in eight years. Yes, exactly. I'm sure his poll numbers will be we'll just still fine. Be here. Because Jesse's <laughs> really never, rarely, if ever, 
wrong. 99.9%. He, he, he was wrong once, but then he was mistaken. I don't want to think what I look like in eight years and <laughs> five. I'm going to be so fat. Um, okay, fat so and bald. I I'll be fat, bald, bald and angry. <laughs> Wait, when? Now? <laughs> You're not losing your hair at all. No, I, I, actually, I think it's coming back. It was thinning a little in the, in yes. the front. Then I started eating like a lot of bacon. Back. Yeah. I find that bacon rubbing it in your head. All the pig fat has yes. really helped to stimulate the production yes. in your scalp. It's a swine shine. You know what you should do? You should ask Kimberly for some of her hair. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, this is true. What were we talking about? <laughs> we're talking about President Hitler. Obama. Hitler. Yes. Back to Hitler. Back to Hitler. No, President Obama, and I, I said to myself, self, how long would it take for him to try to take credit for the Trump economy? Because yeah. he's like Jesse, very good at saying, I was right, or had this, I'm responsible for this, and the I'm one the thing we number have one. Common. Right? Yeah. It's really true. He's got, a, let's say, a healthy sense of himself. That's a good right. And, of course, he wants to take credit for... You know President Trump's accomplishments, um, but you know that's fine as long as the country is going ahead. I'm fine with uh, the results. Speak for themselves. Just before Al Franken went out to the Senate floor, when just about everyone knew he was about to resign, I said to a colleague here that well, this will dominate the news for the next few hours. But by the next day, the pundits will be arguing over this question: If Al Franken and John Conyers resign within 24 hours, two prominent Democrats accused of sexual harassment and sexual misconduct. What about the Republicans? What about Roy Moore? Is there a double standard here? Well, didn't have to wait that long because Senator Franken, or soon to be former Senator Franken, uh, took care of that in his remarks. Uh, he talked about how, you know, shocked uh, he was to hear these allegations against him, how he disputes some of them, how he tried to be a champion for women, how he, he's resigning but he's not giving up his voice. So the things that you might expect a lawmaker under fire to say. Uh, and then he said, uh, he's, the irony is not lost on him that while he's leaving, a man who has bragged about his history, bragged on tape, I should say, about his history of sexual assault, sits in the Oval Office, and a man who has repeatedly preyed on young girls campaigns for the Senate with the full support of his party. Well, Roy Moore doesn't have the full support of his party, but he certainly has the support of a good chunk of it and of the President of the United States. So Franken couldn't resist taking shots at Donald Trump and Roy Moore, and now uh, I knew in that instant that that would just sort of speed up the process. So let's look at what happened to Franken, though, uh, because we've spent a lot of time arguing about Moore, and with his election in Alabama coming up on Tuesday, we'll spend a lot more time talking about the nine accusers, um, many of whom say that he uh, either tried to date them or sexually accosted them when they were teenagers. Now, there's no question that the accusations against Franken, even if true, are of a much less serious nature not to justify in any way the deplorable behavior, unwanted kissing, groping during photo ops, uh, and so forth. But, but when the first woman came out, this is now about five or six weeks ago, Leanne Tweeden, now an L.A. radio host, and said that uh, back in the early 2000s she was doing a USO show with then comedian Franken, and there was a skit, and he kissed her in an aggressive way, and she didn't want to. And then, of course, the groping photo, which we've all now seen, where she's sleeping on the plane and he's doing his thing. Uh, it was a humiliation. It was an embarrassment. But I didn't think then, most people didn't think then, most political and media commentators certainly didn't think then that Al Franken was going to lose his job over that. Okay, so then a couple more women came out and said he grabbed their butt uh, during photo ops, and it was starting to look like a bit of a pattern. But again, um, kind of a far distance from the notion that uh, the Minnesota Democrat would have to give up his job. But what happened is it built and it built and more accusers and then Politico on Wednesday reported uh, on a case of a former congressional aide, former congressional aide not identified, who said that uh, Franken in, in 2006, before he was a senator, uh, had tried to uh, engage in unwanted kissing with her. And then that same day there was a woman, another former congressional aide, she wrote a piece for The Atlantic, Tina Dupuy, uh, saying um, he had, in a photo op, sort of grabbed and squeezed her waist. It was maybe the least offensive of some pretty offensive allegations, but the very eloquent way in which she wrote it. Uh, I think just the, the, the dam burst, and you had Kirsten Gillibrand, and soon you had almost all the female Democratic senators saying, Al Franken must go. And then you had more than half the sitting Democratic senators saying, Al Franken must go. And then you had Chuck Schumer having quiet conversations, Schumer who had been silent on the question of resignation, uh, with Al Franken and finally, obviously, helping to persuade him uh, that it was time to resign. Uh, he had not only lost the support of most of his colleagues, but he had lost um, the Minneapolis Star Tribune, which had called for him to step down. So 
obviously, uh, Franken trying to uh, salvage what he can of his reputation, give a more uplifting speech, greatest honor of his life, and he still values public service, and that's all fine. Uh, but we're in a very different environment now where within 20, 48 hours, John Conyers and Al Franken forced to resign over allegations that you have to think, particularly in Franken's case, a couple years ago, would have um, maybe gotten a slap on the wrist, a reprimand from the Ethics Committee, would have gotten a lot of bad press, probably would not have had to give up his job. So is there now a new standard? Does that affect Roy Moore? Does that affect other lawmakers or others who are accused of sexual harassment or sexual misconduct? Uh, they can't now say, yeah, but Al Franken's still there. Franken's gone. He drew the contrast, and this is going to be, I think, the next turn in the media debate. Uh, the, the Democrats have now a winning issue because they appear to have dealt with two of their own offenders, uh, while Roy Moore, at the moment, still running strongly in Alabama for the United States Senate.